Am I living in the moment? Oh, there goes one passing by. Oh, there goes another. I better hurry up and try to take in this moment and hold it in my hand. To see it grow up, to bloom its little flower on fertile, loving land. I'm living in the moment because I fretted about tomorrow and talked mean about yesterday. I can't be trusted with the shadows and remnants of days gone by. So I plant my feet in this living moment. I'm rooted and it feels good. As the sun beats down on my shoulders, as a green valley parts to reveal its wonder, I can breathe, I can see, I can hear and taste in this living moment. The trees, they sway and move, and I have seen them truly as they are. It sounds so simple to live in the moment. But the grumbles and growls bubble up and spill out. And as I go to stop it, taking my fiercest stand, I see the moment slip away, unable to grasp it through my overworked hands. Oh, I live in this moment, but sometimes don't live of it. Can't see where I stop and you begin. I've trampled flowers, stepped over playful shadows, all on my way to the next moment. But have I lost sight of the one I'm living in? This moment. Can I capture it or just breathe through it and let it be? This moment is all that I have and all that I can know. Today, as I talk about being mindful of the moment, I'll touch on these questions. Why we might want to live in the moment, what we mean by being mindful of the moment, and how something that feels so hard is also intuitively very simple. Have we made it harder than it has to be? Or is it the culture of our thoughts and lives that has made it hard to see? This moment, it is ours to have. Welcome to Let the Verse Flow, a show that takes you on a creative journey to inspire your personal growth. I'm your host, Jill Hodge, a business writer by day, a poet, music lover, and journal enthusiast all the other times. Part performance art, part self-help, this show is unique. So let me show you rather than tell you. But first, please note, The opinions I express here are my own and not a substitute for professional help. If you need someone to talk to, please reach out to a mental health professional. Now, sit back and relax and listen to my reflections from the bright side of the beat. To come to a common understanding about mindfulness, let's define it. It's one of those terms that you may have heard over and over again, say in a meditation class, a yoga class, maybe from a doctor or a therapist or in your readings on personal growth. But it bears stating a definition clearly at the onset of this discussion because it can be a little slippery and it's also very personal. Your concept and reality of mindfulness may look different than mine. Mindfulness as an idea, a concept, an understanding it can kind of slip away if we let it. Um, Mindfulness is deceptively simple, yet it's not always easy. So here's the definition that works best for me. Mindfulness is a mental state of awareness of the present moment without judgment. I'm going to repeat that. Mindfulness is a mental state of awareness of the present moment without judgment. I love the ending of that sentence, the part that says without judgment, that part, because there are very few things that we can say that about in our lives these days. When we are mindful, we try to be fully present as we observe our feelings, our thoughts, and bodily sensations. We notice our feelings, we notice our thoughts, and we notice our body. We notice these thoughts and sensations without getting caught up in them. 
We observe, we notice, but we don't judge. So let's break this down further. Can you think of a time when you were ever simply able to be aware of your thoughts, your feelings, and bodily sensations without having to do something about them? Rarely. Much of the way the world works is not conducive to sitting in silence and stillness. We also rarely detach from this sort of near constant thinking and feeling states that we get caught up in. We can even become fused with our emotions and identify ourselves so closely with feelings or thoughts that they define who we are, and then they color all of our experiences. While it can feel perfectly natural to say, I am angry, in a mindfulness practice, we might separate ourselves from that feeling and tell ourselves something like, I notice anger is coming on. And this subtle change in language and self-taught puts some distance between us and the emotion. And that distance can help alleviate feelings of judgment or feeling stuck in an emotion. You know, notice the difference between saying, I am angry and I notice anger is coming up. You aren't owning that anger as much. You aren't embodying it as much. It simply exists in that moment and you are noticing its presence. When you notice anger, but don't attach to it, you create a little avenue to let the anger pass to seeing it as detached from yourself. It becomes something that isn't fixed or unchangeable. It's fleeting. It's here now, but it may not return. And we are able to leave it alone. And we may find that it leaves as quickly as it came into our life. There isn't a sense that you'll be holding on to that anger. And the space that we have created between the angry feeling and our reaction to it allows us to let go of the anger more easily. Over time, anger starts to lose some of its grip on our mind. Also, it's less judgmental to notice these thoughts and feelings than to get entangled with them to the point where they fuse with our identity. So mindfulness helps us notice thoughts and feelings um, as we gain greater awareness of our body and our breathing it helps us distance ourselves from those feelings and thoughts just enough to remove our identity from them. And it helps remove judgment. It's really very powerful. And it's unlike anything else that I can think of that appears to be that simple in nature as being present in the moment. But mindfulness takes deep practice. And our first attempts at being mindful may take us into some uncomfortable territory because we are finally reigning in the mind after what could be decades of letting it run free. You know, like a wild child, our feelings and thoughts may have taken center stage running the show. And now we are asking ourselves to look at them as just mere sort of passing notions. You know, we are detaching from them and that takes time and practice and acceptance. The acceptance that it will feel messy that it won't be anywhere near perfection, and that it will be unlike the typical rhythms and patterns that we have known in our lives. But if we can agree that mindfulness is a good goal, that we want more mental freedom and neutrality, if we want to release the hold that these strong emotions and sort of tangled states of mind have wrapped us up in, we have options in pursuing mindfulness. We might pursue mindful meditation which is a route that I'm choosing in this stage of my life and what I want to talk about here. But if the first thought that pops into your head when I say mindful meditation is a guru sitting in lotus position chanting, I'm hopeful that I can convince you that mindful meditation can be many things to many different people. There are many shades of nuance to meditation. You can meditate while sitting, while lying down, which is one of my favorites, <laughs> while walking, even while eating. And you can add mindful moments to your day and not structure things into a formal meditation at first. You have flexibility and freedom. 
Your mindfulness meditation practice can be your own. So you call the shots. In a few moments, music is going to start and I'm going to stop talking for a bit. Please stay with me. I want you to be mindful of this music for just a while. There's going to be sweet violin and a beat that brings a smile, a short respite. Just enjoy the music without an agenda. Get a taste of mindfulness. There's nothing you need to do right now, nothing more important than a few moments for yourself. Did you hear the violin? Did you smile? Did the beat make you want to tap your hands and feet? You connected with the moment. Let's find out how we can spend more time with these types of mindful moments. I tend to like the structure of mindfulness meditation sessions, usually done in a chair or sitting on a cushion or lying down. Some days it's a simple sitting meditation, Other days I do a body scan meditation while lying down. And then I also do a walking meditation. I enjoy walking in nature. So that's a less formal type of mindfulness meditation that I engage in. And as most of you know by now, one of my problems, it it can be a problem or an asset depending on the situation, is that once I get an idea in my head, (laughs) it's hard to let go. If you want to hear me explore this subject of overthinking, check out episode number 23, where I go on an overthinking rant and then try to resolve it. Um, Overthinking and allowing the mind to take over my life is my default. And mindfulness meditation is slowly, slowly helping me change my ways of being. But anyway, where do we start with mindfulness meditation? I'm likely to start with research, my old trusted friend. I love researching. I love the detective work of learning new things by searching the internet, reading books and blog articles. I love it all. But one check of the resources on mindfulness meditation can have you reeling. You know, there are so many types of practice. There's Buddhist, Zen, yoga, there's uh, therapeutic stress reduction, And many of us picture monks and spiritual guides and sitting in a pretzel for hours when we don't even think we have enough time to go to the bathroom. Am I right? Perhaps you're worried that like me, you'll sort of overcomplicate things as you step into mindfulness meditation. So let me give you a few places to start because while you have tons of options, there are some well-known tools and resources that you can explore until you find the type of practice that suits your needs. For example, if you are interested in learning the Dharma or Buddhist teachings connected with the Eastern traditions of meditation, there's a wonderfully rich landscape of information and insight. I'll link to my favorite audio series. It's called Audio Dharma in the show notes, so check it out. Audio Dharma provides lessons and guided meditation sessions from the Insight Meditation Center in Redwood City, California. And I listened to Gil Fronsdale talk so simply and beautifully about the Dharma. It's really aspirational for me as I try to learn and grow my meditation practice. 
Another comprehensive resource is the Insight Timer app, which hosts a collection of guided meditations and mindfulness courses. There's talks, calm music collections, and even group forums. And they even have audio poetry recitations. You might find your girl on this app one day soon, so who knows? I've linked both of these in the show notes, though, so check them out. It isn't difficult to find a mindfulness meditation aid that fits your sensibilities and lifestyle. Maybe you start with a sleep meditation and listen to a music playlist while coloring. You know, you have options. You can also listen to my affirmation meditations. I blend sort of guided meditation with affirmation statements that guide you towards ways of thinking and understanding. And I've shared a few as bonus episodes of the podcast. Um, Check out episodes 20, 22, and 24 for the latest ones. They complement my regular podcast episodes. So see the links in the show notes. I have been studying these Buddhist teachings and meditation off and on for a few years now, but recently I settled into a more steady practice of mindfulness meditation. At its core, mindfulness meditation is a simple activity And you don't have to get involved in a spiritual practice to use it in your life. You can simply begin to use mindfulness meditation techniques to start to quiet the mind, perhaps using your breath as an anchor to stay in the present moment. You can find a comfortable seated position on the floor or in a chair. Other people like to lie down. And from this position, you focus on the breath and calm the body and mind down. As always happens, ideas will rise up in your mind from time to time, and you simply bring your attention to your breath as a way of letting go of those thoughts. You may find your mind thinking about chores you have to do, or something you forgot, or how itchy the back of your neck feels, you know, but each time one of those thoughts comes into your mind, you will let it rise up, and then you're going to let it pass on by. You don't engage with it or worry about it or think about why you are thinking. You return your focus to your rhythmic breathing and move on. And you don't change the way you breathe. I used to really try to exert a lot of pressure and control on my breathing. I thought I had to get a certain rhythm. You don't need to do that. You just need to return your your mind and your attention to your breathing as a way to anchor yourself and move away from those sort of intrusive thoughts. And you do this for, say, 15 or 20 minutes each day, like you do your journaling or your exercise routine, and over time you develop your own mindfulness meditation practice. And one of the most comforting ideas I discovered when I first started meditating was that when you do get distracted by a thought and realize it, you return to being mindful of the breath, and that little moment of recognition that you return to focusing on the breathing, that was a little mindful moment. So there are little successes to be had early on in mindfulness meditation. You know, you got distracted, you noticed it, you were mindful, you returned to focusing on your breath. The breath is a foundational tool for focusing the mind, but you could use a word or a mantra. You can focus on a sound or a sensory experience. The focus on that one thing is an anchor for your thoughts so they just don't run away. And I'm sure you've heard, but the benefits of mindfulness meditation are staggering. There are some well-documented benefits, including reducing stress, improving concentration and focus, and handling difficult emotions. There are also health benefits like better sleep, lower blood pressure, and positive effects on the immune system. Plus, you just feel better, more uplifted and satisfied with your life. All this from as little as 15 minutes a day. So as I've, you know, rejoined my mindfulness meditation practice and my Dharma teachings, these ideas have invaded my creative time for sure. Typical of me. Here's my latest poem. It's called Moments.
moments of angst deferred until there are no words for anger, no avenues of escape, just moments, days of bitter patterns as habits are formed and set, locked in concrete pathways, just moments, years of doing it this way, it's all we've known, until a voice cries and then shouts, and there's a chance to work it out, just moments, stop and look around, searching for the sounds of your heart, and your feet on a quest they are bound, just moments. Moments are becoming golden. We watch them come and pass. So this moment is ours and it's fleeting, but it lasts. Just moments. Days of questions, but they are the right ones and we're asking them now, bathing in. Just moments. Years that we have lost, but we didn't know how and we didn't know what. So that's how it goes. It's over now. Just moments. Now is our chance, because we know what we know now. And we've lived as we lived, living through these moments. Just moments. Living through these moments. Just moments. We can convince ourselves that the patterns of the past are destined to become the patterns of the future, that we are too stuck in our ways, that breaking free from them takes too much time and effort, that it costs too much. But once we realize our lives aren't working, at least not as well as they could be, we have an incredible opportunity to make them better. And it's not always moving mountains and year-long planning. Sometimes it's as simple as being with yourself for 15 minutes each day to take a rest from the angst and twisted thinking. 15 minutes. That's about as long as it takes to wash the daily dishes or brush your teeth and face and settle into bed or get dressed in the morning. Doesn't your mind and your outlook and your sense of well-being deserve to be added to that list? I think we have 15 minutes. The question is, What are you going to do with them? And if you get lost for a bit along the way, or this mindfulness meditation thing seems too much, come back to simple sitting with the breath. Tap into the resources I've mentioned when you are ready and remember to leave that judgment behind. We don't need it and it won't serve us. Here are some journal prompts to help you reflect on your mindfulness practice. Whether you are just getting started or have been practicing for years, each day is a new chance to begin again. Journaling alongside meditation can be wonderful for helping you document your thoughts, your growth, and the ways that you are changing through meditation. Here's the first prompt. Set an intention for your mindfulness meditation by writing about where and when you will devote 15 minutes to your daily practice. Be specific in the details and schedule this time in your calendar. And two, after you complete a meditation session, write about it. What thoughts come to mind now? How does your mind and body feel in this moment? And the third prompt, after a week of meditating, write about what you notice about yourself. Has meditation changed you? Write about any benefits you've observed. There are several foundational tools for our personal growth journeys. Journaling and mindfulness meditation are two of my favorite ones. They complement each other well. Journaling helps us explore and reflect on our life, while mindfulness meditation allows us to be present in that life. Let me know how your meditation practice is going. Reach out to me at jill at letthefirstflow.com. Also, if you'd like me to create a new affirmation meditation on a particular topic, shoot me an email and let me know. Until next time, may your journaling and meditation bring you moments from the bright side of the beat. Thanks for listening. 
hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And speaking of subscribing, head over to LetTheVerseFlow.com and subscribe to my companion newsletter, The Me Time Mixtape. This free newsletter offers three essential hand-curated links to creative self-care tips, tools, and strategies that you can use today to help put yourself back on your to-do list. The podcast inspires while the Me Time Mixtape tools help you put things into action. Check it out. The Me Time Mixtape at LetTheVerseFlow.com. I'll see you next time. Don't forget to stay on the bright side of the beat.